Give me an L. L. Give me an I. I. Give me a C. C. Give me a K. K. Give me an S. S. What's that spell? Lex. That's right, Lex, 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 Lex. crew members and welcome aboard. Uh, my name's Paul and in this hour we're going to be going over some techniques that I use to work on my picking, my uh, left hand hammer ons and pull offs, and a lot of different arpeggio techniques. Uh, I'll also give you fingerings that you can put those in and make actual music. But before we get started, let's tune up. Here's an E, a B, a G, the D, an A, and the low E. For the first couple of years that I played guitar, I was pretty convinced that I'd never be able to pick fast. It pretty much all goes back to some guitar lessons I had when I was six. Uh, I got discouraged and gave up and then started again when I was nine, but I had a real warped memory of how to play the guitar, what the guy had shown me. For some reason, I thought that he told me only to do upstrokes with my right hand and only to use the middle finger on my left hand, which uh, you can imagine how limiting that was to my playing. I, was, I was, uh, remember hearing something where I had to do uh, kind of a gallop and I was trying it with all upstrokes. It was, it was impossible. I just <laughs> definitely had a lot of trouble. Uh, when I was 11, I started taking guitar lessons again, and uh, the teacher took one look at me and said, well, you know, you can do downstrokes, and you can use the other fingers on your left hand. And uh, after that, things definitely uh, progressed a lot faster. Uh, one of the licks that really, really helped up my picking a lot is uh, based on uh, something I call just three notes per string patterns, where you have three notes on a string. In this case, uh, for this exercise, we're using uh, B, C, and D on the 12th fret of the B string. Uh, you start with a downstroke, and then to alter pick, you just do uh, something different than you did the last time. So it'd be uh, down on the B, an up on the C, and a down on the D. The, uh, the hardest thing about alternate picking is when you have to go to the next string. Uh, you have to jump and, and you know, there's tons of noises that uh, can happen if you're not careful. 
a real good exercise for this is basically doing just that, jumping over the string. Uh, the note I hit is E with my first finger on the 12th fret of the high E string. Uh, so the exercise has got only four notes in it. And then I go back down and I descend. So the whole thing sounds like that. Sounds pretty simple like that when you speed it up. It's a great lick. Right there at the end, I did a uh, sequence that basically just exaggerates the more difficult part of the lick, which is crossing over the string. Uh, I go from the E to the D note, which is on two different strings, and it would be an upstroke on the E and a down on the D. And I do that twice before I descend. So the whole lick is going to sound like this. One more time. If you have trouble with this, uh, really concentrate on getting the upstrokes on the E note. That's uh, a lot of times if I have trouble with a lick, I can kind of pinpoint the problem. And I found that usually is the problem on that one is doing the ups on the E note. You can even exaggerate the motion at first. You won't be able to play it as quickly, but it'll help you play it clean or help it get help the idea in your mind. So um, let's hear that one up to speed. Uh, it also sounds really good alternated with the normal four up and down. That would be something like this. So the first time I just go straight and then alternate between the two. Real aggressive sounding. One of the uh, one of the ways to practice this uh, that really helps a lot also is to uh, try it with a clean tone. A lot of times with the distortion, it masks uh, the way the string will sound. So when initially practicing these, you might want to have a cleaner tone. You may have to pick a little bit harder than you would with distortion, but it gives you a lot of control and it's a lot easier to lighten up on the pick and uh, than it is to get harder. So playing with a clean tone really helps that. Another variation that really helped my picking out a lot is uh, real similar to the four note sequence, except this time it's got six notes. Uh, basically the same thing, we'll keep the same position, just add F sharp and G, which will keep us in E minor. Again, you get that same upstroke on the E note. I keep thinking about that. And let's hear that one up to speed. That's one of my favorites. This sounds real good in combination with four, if you do four notes up and down and then six notes up and down. That's going to sound like this. Let me do that slow so you can hear how it goes. One more time. I use a lot of these combinations between four, six, and also going between the two strings uh, for improvisation, this kind of thing. <laughs> Loads of fun. The, uh, the next sequence is probably the first thing, the first lick that I can really play fast with picking. Uh, the, um, the lick is very similar to the sixes lick. Except I don't descend, I only ascend. Uh, it'll be a little lower in the neck. I'll start on the low E string on the seventh fret, the B note. This is still in the key of E minor. Um, there are a lot of shapes in this that are real good for the left hand also. The first one would be a half step and a whole step. It would be B, C, and D. 
and then E F sharp and G. It's the same thing we're doing, but two octaves lower. And I'm only ascending, only going up. The uh, pattern continues on the A string, and you can see the last three notes I played were on the A string. So I just shift up to the next position, staying diatonic with that scale, which would give me the notes F sharp, G, and A. The shape, the left hand shape, would be a half step and a whole step. So basically what I'm doing is going up six notes and then shifting to the next pattern. From there, I do another pattern of six based on that position shift. So uh, the pattern of six will be F sharp, G, A, and then B, C, D on the D string, tenth position. You have the same shape of a half step and a whole step. And you're staying in the key of E minor. So that's going to sound like this. All alternate picking. So the upstrokes that you really want to watch are the E note right here. And then the B note. There are certainly are other upstrokes, but those are the ones that will be the hardest because that's where you have to cross over the next string. From there, just keep doing the pattern where uh, we ended on the D string, so go up to the next position on the D string. It should be uh, two whole steps uh, C, D, and E. And then uh, to the G string to do our six pattern, which would give us the notes F sharp, G, and A. This is a shape that a lot of people find uncomfortable initially, but it's, it's uh, real useful to learn it because it's uh, diatonic to E minor if you start on C. So, so far we have this. Uh, let's continue. After we get to the A note, go up to the 12th fret on the G string and do two whole steps, B, G, A, and B. Then on the B string, to continue our pattern of six, we'd have C, D, and D. From there, let's continue, go to the D note on the 15th fret of the B string with your first finger and do a pattern, the shape is again two whole steps. The notes would be D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. So basically what we have here is just a bunch of ascending sixes, patterns of six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera. And because of the way it's fingered, each of those will start with a downstroke. Down, 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 down. So if you can practice that one initial lick, all the rest should be fairly easy to do. Because they're all picked this, exactly the same way. Um, let's give it a try up to tempo, you can hear how it sounds. Real hip. This sequence is pretty much the next step in, uh, in picking. It uh, involves a major scale. C major harmonized all three notes per string. So uh, it's pretty much straight C major, but it's got all three notes on each string. The pattern that I use within it, uh, the initial one, I took that four sequence again. We'll get real comfortable with this one after a while. Taking those, uh, that same kind of pattern, four notes up and down, one, two, three, four, and back down. Then I went up six notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, that's pretty much the sequence. One, two, three, four, back down, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I do that based on each set of two strings. Right there I did it on the E and the A. Next I'll do it on the A and the D, keeping the shape of the scale so I stay in the key of C, or A minor if you're a diehard rock player. Uh, next I'll do the uh, D and G strings. Same kind of sequence each time, but just changing the left hand shape slightly to stay in the key. Uh, then the G and B strings. That's a little more difficult for the left hand. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, I found the way that's easiest for me is just to reach across with your second finger 
to go to the B string. And then shift up to your first finger on that same A note when you ascend in the six note pattern. Sounds complicated, but when you try it yourself, it'll be great. And then the last two strings, the B and E strings. So the whole thing together, up to tempo, let's give it a try. It's pretty terrifying. Uh, let's slow it down a little bit so you can hear how it sounds rhythmically. Uh, one more time up to tempo. One thing when you're practicing these kind of licks that's really important and uh, very easy to ignore if you're not careful is uh, the synchronization between the left and right hands. Uh, always make sure that you've got one pick per note with your left hand. You don't want to be doing uh, that, that sort of thing. You know, if you lose synchronization, it starts to sound really kind of sloppy. Um, and uh, once you get a real synchronized feel happening, you know, you'll have, uh, you'll still, still, it won't hurt your unsynchronized playing. You'll have no trouble sounding, uh, sounding like this if you want to, so don't worry about losing that. Uh, and you'll have gained something much cooler, I have a feeling, by playing with synchronization. Another version of that pattern is exactly the same thing, but uh, starting on the highest note of the scale, which is F, and basically just reversing the pattern. Uh, originally, it was four up and down, and then six up. So what I'm doing is starting on the highest note and going four down and up, and then six down. Let me play that real slow. The uh, one thing that's a little bit hard to get used to, uh, picking-wise, is that I start with a downstroke on this. Which is going to feel a lot different than the ascending version. Um, let's do the whole scale that way. Um, at a slower tempo, it sounds like this. than the B and G strings. Two middle strings. The D and the A string. And the lowest two strings, A and E. One time in tempo, fairly slow tempo. One thing you can use to get between licks that ascend and descend uh, is a pattern I came up with. Uh, I'll go ahead and explain it. Starts out, uh, it's all in C major, and it starts on the G note on the B string, eighth fret. And uh, the left hand shape will do two whole steps. So we have G, A, and B in the same shape on the high E string, which would be uh, C, D, and E. More sixes. Right there, we'll shift up to the 13th fret by sliding your pinky. And uh, right there, I'll descend in a six in the same key. Our shape's going to have to change slightly. We'll have a whole step and a half step instead of two whole steps. Uh, the notes would be F, E, and D on the high E string, and C, B, and A on the B string. Right there, I slide back down to my original position. So this one sounds like this. That's a tool I use uh, for getting between ascending and descending scales. Let's say I've got that uh, lick that we just learned in C. I'll 
I'll shift up on the last six to the next position and descend uh, in another lick. Let's uh, let's take that same pattern. but uh, in a slightly different shape, which I will show you later. So uh, let's give it a try. Up to tempo, so you can hear how it sounds. And uh, it stays, the rhythm keeps pretty, uh, pretty much the same. You don't have to worry about uh, kind of floating around rhythmically. It's real good. Uh, you know, this, this kind of thing. It keeps the triplet going. Another real good exercise is doing that same kind of thing, but on uh, larger amounts of strings. You could take uh, four strings in a scale. I'm keeping the top two notes, or two strings the same. The ones in the middle strings, uh, the notes would be A, B, and C, and D, E, and F the shapes a whole step and a half step. And the one we just did with two whole steps, starting on G. Right there, setting up to the F note and descending using four strings. You already know the notes on the E string and the B string. Let's go to the G and D. The notes would be uh, G, F, E, and D. C, B, and then slide back down to your original position. So let's go through this a couple times. You can hear how it sounds, and we'll do it slow. Again, the rhythm stays, stays real even. Uh, you can even tap your foot to it. The... Uh, thing to watch out for when practicing this, uh, as, as far as the uh, ups and downs go, when you shift, it's going to be a downstroke. In fact, you may just want to practice that much. And then uh, do the same kind of thing when you descend. Just take those two sections, which both end with downstrokes, and also start with upstrokes. And then, after you get those two comfortable, put them together. Uh, possibilities are endless. You can use all six strings. I'd like to show you some techniques that, uh, a little more modern, I refer to them as guitar tricks because they use some pretty unorthodox hand moves. Let's get started with the first one. So pick up your guitar. One of the important things about this, it's a two-handed lick, so you have to figure out what to do with your pick. You know, I pretty much just whiz mine in the air. You don't need it at all. Um, first of all, it's a pretty wide stretch. Take your left hand, stick your first finger on the A note, uh, fifth fret on the high E string. Take your pinky and put it on the uh, D note, tenth fret of the high string. And because it's a two-handed lick, you'd sort of reach up with your right hand uh, and just reach up and pull a rabbit out of the guitar. So, now we have a lot of sequences to practice that have a three-note per string idea. Let's put those into some three-note per string scales so we can play them in actual music. I've started off with some major scales. Basically, I've got C major starting on each step of the scale. The lowest one I can fit in the neck starts on F, sounds like this. Next one starts on G. And starts on A, on B, 